You're listening to Thematics, presented by UnleashStrengths.com, the only show that embraces your addiction to strengths. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 22. This is, is this 22, Grace? Yes. Yeah, okay, boom, I'm getting it right. <laughs> See, I'm learning how to count. I, I surpassed all my fingers and toes, but now we're on episode number 22 of the one and only podcast out there that embraces your addiction to strengths. That's right, folks, Thematics. My name is Andy Sokolovich, and I am a Gallup certified strengths coach and the owner of a coaching practice known as Unleashed Strengths. We're nestled right here in a Midwest town called Clinton, Iowa, and I am a coach for hire, working with organizations to enhance employee engagement, boost recognition, and increase overall job satisfaction. If you are interested in enlisting the help of a strengths coach or looking for a speaker for your next workshop, conference, seminar, wedding, whatever it is, go ahead and give me a ring, 815-441-2219. Again, that number, 815-441-2219. You can shoot me an email, andy at unleashedstrengths.com. Thematics is a podcast series designed to highlight the massive impact the Clifton Strengths Finder assessment has had on now over 11 million people. It's our belief that the best way to promote its effectiveness and proven results is to interview those who've experienced the power of strengths-based development firsthand. Our guest today is intimately aware of his strengths and wants nothing more than to share his story in an effort to help others just like you succeed. For more information or to schedule an interview for yourself, that's right. You can be on this show. Go ahead. Shoot me an email again. Andy at UnleashedStrengths.com. We're on social media. Facebook.com forward slash UnleashedStrengths. Follow us on Twitter at UnleashCSF. You can subscribe to our RSS feed and our iTunes broadcast. Uh, if you're watching, if you're, I'm sorry, if you're listening to this and you're watching it on the website, go ahead in the top right hand corner at UnleashedStrengths.com. You'll see a little subscribe link. Click on that. You can also submit your question via SpeakPipe. SpeakPipe is a very cool little piece of technology. If you go to UnleashedStrengths.com, on the far right-hand uh, corner of that of the home screen, you'll see that there's a little button that says Leave Voicemail. If you click that, you can just record anything you want right into your PC's microphone or your Mac, and then that'll get sent to me, and then I will play that live on this show, and then Grace and myself and our guests will answer your question. <sighs> I always get out of breath at that part right there. <laughs> That's a there. lot. It I is. like the wedding part, though. Uh, yeah, Strengths no, I'm trying weddings. to, I'm trying really to broad, broaden my service offerings there. <laughs> so that voice you hear on the other end, that is the one and only Grace Lacante. Grace is a co-host on this broadcast now. Grace, say hello to everybody and do me a favor, introduce our guest for today. I will do that. Hi, everybody. I'm Grace Lacante. I own Lacante Consulting. I just moved to Vancouver, Washington, gorgeous area, and I came from South Dakota. So I met Joe. Our guest today is Joseph Stapka. He um, is a regional director at Modern Woodmen of America and has been involved in training and encouraging people for years. And so I had the pleasure of meeting him through a group called One Million Cups, which is an entrepreneurial networking group. Um, so shout out to them. Thank you for connecting us. <laughs> um, so Joe, Joe and I have... Um, talked a lot about strengths and he attended a meetup group that I had in Sioux Falls and I'm just so privileged that he wanted to be on this show to tell us about his top five strengths and how they work um, in the workplace and with others. So Joe, would you mind telling us what your top five strengths are? Thank you, Grace. And, and Andy, also thank you. And it's an honor for me to join the both of you. Uh, my top five are activator, positivity, maximizer, belief, and individualization. That's awesome. And Joe, you know, talk to us a little bit about what you do. What, I mean, we, we just found out you work uh, for Modern Woodmen of America, but tell us a little bit about what that job entails, and then go ahead and reveal to us how strengths entered your life. How did it come? I mean, you got the book in your hand, or you got mm -hmm. access to the code, but you're, you've been using this for quite a while, correct? I have. Um, I've been with Woodman now for 30 years. I spent my first uh, six years with them as a financial advisor. And then shortly that, after that, I uh, began a career in management with them. So training other people, building other people into uh, their careers. And uh, while doing that, and, and to be honest, I don't even call where I was exposed to the book. But somebody exposed me to the book, and I'm pretty certain it was pretty soon after it had come out. So I, I picked it up. I read it. I completed the assessment. I uh, 
and you my strengths. And I've got to be honest with you, there wasn't really that much about it. Okay, it just it uh, you did. It's like uh, so many things that sometimes we do. We complete an assessment, and there it is. You know, mm-hmm. we file it away. Well, as I kind of progressed in my career and I started to grow, one of the things I always struggled with is I'd, I'd go to an industry event or a company event, and I'd see somebody I really admire. And I'd and, and watch them and I'd say, boy, she is so good at doing that. I've got to be her. And then I'd, I'd go to another presentation and, you know, boy, he is so good at coaching people. I've got to be him. And and I realized that I couldn't. I, I couldn't be her. I couldn't mm-hmm. be him. I had to be me. And of all things, for some reason, I, I went back and I, I pulled out that strengths thing that I had done probably at that time several years later. And I kind of looked at that and I realized that I have some strengths that if I focus in on those, they can help me build my business and really try to be who I am and realizing that just because maybe Grace or Andy have a strength in one area, if it's not a strength in mine, uh, I'm not going to be successful in that area. So I really tried to focus in on what I do and uh, realizing I probably have to get some help kind of uh, shoring me up in some other areas. And I, and I began that process at that point. And to be very honest with you, not only did my success in my career really, really blossom and, and take off and lead to new levels within the organization, but uh, for people that have known me for that 30 years, I think they would, uh, they'd ask and they'd say, what exactly happened? You always really, really liked your job, but then all of a sudden something changed where you're just a different person. You just really, really love what you do all the time. And, and for me, it's just been the ability really just to focus in on things that I, uh, that I have natural abilities in doing and realizing that there's some things I'm not that good at. And by focusing on things that I'm not that good at, it was frustrating for me. So I really work yeah. on just a couple of key things now uh, in, in what I do. I, I lead uh, now a part of the country for the company. So I work with a team of managers, work with teams of advisors. Um, obviously, as a leader, one of my key roles is setting the vision for the people. Uh, the, it's, it's a lot of communicating that I do with the people. Uh, I do a lot of coaching with our advisors also. So uh, with Grace's help, you know, that uh, that strength of mac- maximizer really ties in well with uh, that role of coaching advisors. But then something I really didn't understand and working with Grace, she's helped me understand that also, is that the role, um, the strength that I have of individualization. Uh, right. and, 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 and I do that when I work with uh, the advisors, I realize that not everybody is going to react to the same way to, uh, to goals that we establish for them. Not everybody's going to have the same goals or the same values. And uh, to me, that's one of the most exciting parts of the business. Uh, Yesterday, I actually spent some time with three different advisors doing a quarterly review with them. And uh, they're all three very, very successful, but three totally different people. So Mm -hmm. um, using those strengths has very, very much helped me in that role. Yeah, Joe, I remember when we first talked after the One Million Cups meeting that I, in which I shared my business with the group, uh, we discussed um, briefly the excitement that you had for introducing this to others because of what it had done for you. But once we got a chance to talk later, I remember one of the things that stood out, and you just mentioned it a few minutes ago, the the fact that you see other people and you wanted to you wanted to showcase what they do well. You saw a, abilities in others. That's exactly what individualization is. It's um, seeing the unique qualities of other people. And then adding that to maximizer, which is – taking something and making it excellent. I mean, those two qualities right there are just, I have so much respect for them. They're both very low on my strength list. (laughs) It's great that you recognize it and that you can not only um, help others, but you don't wish that you were other people. You actually Mm -hmm. use it to benefit the world other than keeping it as kind of like, I wish I were like (laughs) so-and-so. You want to see them succeed. Isn't that a huge weight off your shoulders though, when you can finally realize that about yourself? I mean, for me, it was when I started because I was the same way as you, Joe. I'd see other people excel in certain areas and think I have to be that great at this or I have to be better than that person if I want to get surpass them professionally. And for so long, you put so much pressure on yourself and the Mm -hmm. weight just bears down until you're able to kind of, you know, and through strengths finders, how I found this out until you're able to identify saying, hey, that's not me. (laughs) And I don't have to be that person. To me, it was a huge boost in confidence, but it also felt like a giant monkey was lifted off my back. (laughs) No more monkeys. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Andy, um, I I just get the impression by visiting with you, I'm a little bit older than you, but I've uh, I've been so fortunate in this business. I mean, to really, really to have been mentored and and to have very, very successful people uh, assist me. 
And, and again, I've gained from all of them, but originally it was kind of, well, I've got to be like them and, and she's good at that skill and I've got, and, I, and then just to realize that, uh, no, I don't have the same set of skills that she has. I don't have the same talents that he has, but the talents that I have do play well into my role. And I just have to focus in on those. Now, there are some things that these other people that I looked at and said, boy, I just want to be like Grace and I just want to be like Andy. When I looked at some of those people, I realized that some of the things they do well aren't a strength for me. They're way in the bottom of my list. So obviously those are the things that I've had to shore up and get help with. You know, I've uh, listened to a couple of episodes of your show and I've, and I've heard about the ideation. Uh, and then I hear some people talking uh, uh, about details. Oh, that's not me. I got to be honest with you. Okay, <laughs> but but I have phenomenal support people that that do that with me and and do those things for me. So I, if I were as I did in the past, if I tried to spend time in those things, man, I'd go home exhausted, you know, um, and just kind of beat up. And and now it's amazing. Yesterday, some people look at my schedule and say, you know, God, for a fifty-two year old guy, you sure had a long day. But I, I came home at nine thirty at night last night just as excited as when I left just at 7.30 in the morning because I was really all day I was focusing on my strengths. That is awesome, Joe. Wow. Yeah, tell us a little bit. So when when you first took the assessment, what was the timeline there from when you took the assessment, you received your results, and when you actually started to realize, hey, this is applicable and I'm going to start applying this both personally and professionally? Yeah. You know, I, and again, I'm sure it was not like weeks or even months I don't know if it was years that went by. And, and again, it was just something, I'm sure I was at some conference, somebody maybe mentioned the idea of the book. Okay, I'll pick that up. I read it, and you know, just like anybody else, I did the assessment, kind of looked at it. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm positive that when I read it, the assessment originally, when I looked at those results, I, I don't know exactly what my thoughts were, but I'm sure there was a lot of envy in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not mm -hmm. what I thought it should be. Oh, that's not what I wanted it to be, probably. Wow. So, you know, that's probably why I set it aside. OK, but then again, kind of going through this process and working with people and people saying, look, you know, you're not going to be that person, but you're phenomenal in this skill. OK, you do this well, you lead well, but you do relationships so well. And that's kind of a not a real common thing and, and focus in on those things. Well, then, you know, I kind of pulled that out again and kind of looking at, again, some of those unique things in there, you know, that that maximizer, like you mentioned, Grace. Yeah, that that is one of the things. And people kind of tease me about that. You always want things better. Well. Yeah, you know, that's that's just the way I'm wired, I guess. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then again, that individualization. Yeah, I really, really do. Uh, people are individuals. And if I can help them grow, um, you know, when it's all said and done, what I really, really hope is said about me is that uh, you know, he was uh, he was a good dad. He was a good husband and he grew people. That's mm -hmm. what I really like people to say about me. So wow. that individualization helps me look at people and say, okay, well, you know, Cindy's like this, and maybe I can help her in that area. But Brad's like this, so we can focus on those things. We talk a lot in the strengths world, I guess, is about that aha moment, that time. And, I, and you may have touched on this, but let's let's go back and kind of highlight it. Sure. That moment where you, you look down, and, and for you, who I don't know when exactly it was, but describe when you just sat one, yeah, this is legit. There's some traction here. This isn't like anything else I've done in the past. I can actually hold on to this and physically run with it. Yeah. And, you know, and again, I, I'd like to give you this, uh, the clouds parted and the thunder came down moment, but it wasn't for me. It really wasn't really what it was for me was probably the opposite. What it was for me was probably being frustrated by trying to do everything else as opposed to looking at that report and saying, this is who you are work on these things mm -hmm. again it was literally years you know i'd like to say only oh, this for a couple of weeks or a couple of months that was years of, of of trying to emulate other people and finding out that i'm just not really good at doing that so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm probably you know and again i can't tell you a date or a month but probably in desperation one time maybe i just stumbled across this thing again and i kind of pulled it out and i started looking at it and, and kind of reading some more about it and realizing yeah, look, that's true. Okay, yeah, it, 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 I, there are some things that I feel real strongly about my beliefs, you know. And yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm always smiling, I'm always happy, I'm a positive person, okay. And, and as kind of walk through those strengths again, all of a sudden, after a couple of years of maybe pounding my head into the wall, realizing time out, <laughs> that, that combination, that, that's a pretty good combination, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a pretty good combination for a leader of an organization to have. And what if you just focused in on those things? So so I, I really apologize. I know that uh, sometimes there's people that do that report and they kind of study it for a couple of days and then all of a sudden they just gel and they realize, wow, 
I've got to apply these things. And for me, the honesty is it's just the opposite. I did it like so many people would do something. Oh, that's real cute. Put it away and go back to what we were doing. You know? Yeah, Joe, it sounds like um, you did exactly for yourself what you do with others. You saw individual abilities and you actually kind of went with that step by step, which I think is a healthier way than having an aha moment, to be honest. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> I have a lot of aha moments and they I don't plan for it, but I, I just live life very like, sure. next thing, I, I'm an activator, I have a focus, strength, you know, I, I love ideas, so ideation, I'm just always coming up with new things. And my seventh strength, which Joe, I would encourage you and any of our listeners to you invest an additional $89 in yourself, which you could do as a birthday present or a Christmas present. Um, it unlocks for you the rest of the report of what's already available through the, the assessment. So I did that a few months ago and I was amazed at the rest of my strengths in order. So number seven for me is positivity. Mm. Um, and I know all three of us actually share that strength, don't we? Yeah, it's, uh, it's <laughs> just a eight, lot of positivity. Eight for here. me, eight is where I where Yeah, I It's have your positive. second, right, Andy? What's that? Your second strength is No, positivity? strategic, futuristic, woo, ideation, and communication. Oh, futuristic. And then Sorry. activator, significance, and positivity. So Futuristic. Never yeah, mind. I thought yeah. you had positivity in there. But Joe, you'd be, you'd be surprised. Well, I guess you probably wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I think, we you know what would be very intriguing to me and insightful is to find out out of all of the individuals who have done almost 12 million now that have taken the Strengths Finder assessment, I like to see how many of those instantly gravitated towards it and 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 latched on and applied mm -hmm. it immediately and where their top five kind of lined up versus those like Joe and myself, I'll use as an example, that kind of just looked at it, said it's good information, but really it didn't come back to it until they became frustrated. And I think that's where it resurfaced out of the confines of my desk drawer when I was when I thought I was gonna hit rock <laughs> bottom. And it's amazing how you hear all these stories like Joe's, myself, and other people who get to the point where they're almost about ready to break or entrepreneurs are going to throw in the towel. And all of a sudden, Strengths Finder resurfaced. And now it allowed them something that they could grab onto and point in a certain direction and then apply the crap out of it to build that base, that base that they were using towards success. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I actually prefer, I know Joe said, I apologize for not giving you an amazing answer for the aha moment, but I actually <laughs> rather hear about it because to me that proves its validity. I mean, that proves that it is a sustainable way to continue to get better and better and better and grow as an individual. Cause if you've totally forgot about it and never went back to it, well, it wouldn't be as popular as it is, but it's, it's there and people are actually using it. It's very powerful. Yeah. yeah. Actually, now that you say that I didn't have an aha moment at the the time I took it. Mm -hmm. It was years later when I was going through a major life relationship work <laughs> everything challenge yeah. and I was like what in the world can I use to ground me? That was what I went back to. I looked back to personality tests and this was the one that helped me to get a focus on what to do next. So you know, I after, definitely hear what you're saying, Joe. After uh, Grace and I visited one time you'd mentioned about unlocking it. I did. I went and I unlocked it. So I, I've got all of them. Cool. And then when, when I did that also at the same time when I went to purchase that, I purchased a couple more um, of the uh, assessments and I had my sons. My wife and I have uh, twin 20 year old boys. Wonderful. So we had them completed with their girlfriends completed. So we, wow. we've, had, we've had some fun at the house. Oh, yeah, the that only is one cool. that hasn't yet is my wife. We've got a code for oh. her. We've just been a little busy, a, a little busy, and it's it's really interesting when I unlock the whole code and I looked at the bottom, you know, um, and this is uh, an independent opinion here. So I kind of looked at this and I, I kind of got a little through the list before I found stuff that oh, maybe okay, maybe I'm not as good at that one. But like even in the top ten, you know, I'm pretty good at doing those things. Mm -hmm. But the closer I got to the bottom, it's like, oh yeah, that's definitely not me. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, uh, the number thirty four for me is adaptability. Yeah, okay, that's not me. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You don't so, live in the moment, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Not unless the moment. So, like, Joe, tell us about your. Advanced. Tell us about the results that your sons received. Were they similar? No, no, they're not. That's and cool. We've got two wonderful young men, and they're individuals, and uh, you know, and, and uh, it's it's awesome seeing them do that, and then discussing it with them. And, and you know, they're both sophomores in college now, so they're kind of in that career process thinking, and, and it's been really fun doing this with them, also. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have my wife do hers pretty soon. So Are they identical twins? No, not, they don't even look like brothers. No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's neat. I would like to, yeah, that'd be cool to see if there's ever a study conducted just on, on twins to determine yeah. where their strengths lie in comparison to, you know, the siblings. That's cool. Uh, 
so Joe, let's talk a little bit now. We just you just revealed that you encourage your family to take this and you know your, your son's girlfriends and things like that. But let's talk about from a professional standpoint. When you sure. approach a coworker and say, "Hey, there's this assessment out there. It's called the Gallup Strengths Finder. I think you should take it." Do you ever get any kind of resistance saying, "Oh, it's just another personality assessment. I'm not going to waste my time on it." And if so, how do you kind of explain to them that it's it's going to be beneficial and how yeah. they can apply it? That's a, that's a great question. One of the things that I personally do with anything that I introduce to my associates is just a long time ago, I made the commitment that I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't ask them to do something I haven't done myself and seen validity. in it. So again, and, and I just, uh, this is the, 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 the million cups of coffee thing. When I learned about this, I said, okay, I'm going to go check that out because I think that's something that some of my associates should attend. But I'm not going to send this to them blind. So I went to it a couple of times. Like, yeah, this is good. We got to send it to that again. So when I kind of pulled out the strength finder again and was reusing it and kind of looking at those things, and you know, uh, am I working within those? Am I spending too much time outside of the strengths? Mm -hmm. And then kind of looking at a group of uh, future leaders within our organization that I'm mentoring and that I'm leading, I realized, wow, this would be perfect for them to take. And and then let's uh, let's as a group work on this. But then as individuals. One on one, I can work within their individual strengths with them. So, very simply, because of the fact I could go to them and say, "Look, this is something I did. I think 10, 12 years ago. It's made a major." There was absolutely no hesitance, you know. And I, I got them each copy of the book, and I said, "Look, read the book too. Don't just mm -hmm. do the assessment. It's an easy read." And then I said, "Do these," and they were excited. And 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 when we got together as a group and we kind of shared it, uh, I think I'm going to share some of this with Grace. It was amazing. When I looked at that, and I thought, how did I miss those things? Mm -hmm. And yeah. some of these people that I've known for two, three, five years, how did I miss that? How did I not catch that? So my my interaction with them on some business topics now, uh, it's so much clearer mm -hmm. because I understand uh, that that not everybody has the same personality traits that I do. That some people are more analytical, okay, and uh, with those people, I do be a little more patient and. Yeah. Uh, I have to listen to some more details from them, but that's okay. They're great people. So it, it's uh, it's helped them, but it's really helped me help them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. I like yeah. that. Joe, like Joe, I have that. one more question. Sure. Um, how do you use the the knowledge that you get when other people take this, especially in your business practice? But I, I find that it's extremely helpful for relationships as well. Um, it helps me to understand how to relate to people better in general. But in business, do you find that um, – I mean, what are the steps that you take once you find out what their top five are? Do you have a process that you use to help them be mentored in that? Because just knowing them and even the definitions does not really help a lot of people, I don't think. It's once you realize how they correlate with others, how they can be applied, you know, how to use that to move forward in the world, right? So do you have a process that you use once one of your associates takes the assessment? You know, the process really, uh, f for me, is more of a process for me to look at that and realize that uh, some of these line up with some of the things that are my strengths, some of them don't. So the ones where we line up, maybe it makes the communication a little easier for us because it's just going to be natural in those areas. But some of those areas where it doesn't line up, I've got to realize that when they report to me on some issues, maybe that's why it's more detailed than I would expect. Maybe that's why they um, sometimes question two or three times for more details about something right. that I'm requesting of them. Okay, mm -hmm. and, I, and it helps me understand that better. So it, it really, from my end, it's eliminated some frustration. Uh, I, you know, again, I'd like to tell you that I that I have a manual or something that I turn no, to fine. when I get the report, and I don't. I, again, I don't. that's that's how I think. Sorry, Joe. I think in terms of processes and you yeah. know futuristic you know i line everything up in my mind so i mm -hmm. yeah i didn't mean to make it sound no. like you have to have a manual but i just wondered what it is that you do with that information so you basically put it through your sieve of how do i see the world mm -hmm. how does that relate to the way that i expect things and then i can give them some wiggle room if if they really need more structure or more detail right you know absolutely and then yeah. again what uh, what tasks what duties would they be most fulfilled in most engaged in Okay. And, and are there some things maybe that I'm currently asking them to do that don't fit those strengths as well? And should we right. reshift some of those responsibilities, just like we've done with me? Okay, the things that don't engage me as well, I don't do those things. Okay, so the, that's kind of bad of me if I'm walking around with a smile all day long because I'm doing work that engages me all the time. But yet I have associates that I'm mentoring 
and, and, and perhaps they don't feel that way because I've got them involved in some things that they're not engaged in. So mm -hmm. that, that really helps me kind of clarify that also to realize. And again, when I looked back after this, I'm like, oh, man, how did I miss the fact that he is such a learner, that that is so important to me? It all makes sense now, mm -hmm. you know? But uh, and, and some of these people I've worked with for two years. And, and after I did the assessment, gosh, of course, it all makes sense to me now. Yeah, I, I love how you stated, how can I walk around the smile on my face being completely engaged at work if I don't really take the time to, to yeah. understand what how my employees or those below me, are, are they engaged? Do they have everything they need? What am I equipping them with? And uh, it pairs well. Like I love when I coach strengths. I it's depending on the size of the organization. I love introducing Gallup's Q12 survey as well to just gauge employee engagement, um, because I think they hold hands very nicely together. Mm -hmm. um, but I, yeah, I, and I also there's something that you said that that really stood out about it enhances communication. It lubricates their process. You know, if you're going to be sending an email on a Friday <laughs> afternoon to somebody who's highly analytical, <laughs> that you're not going to get an instant reply, oh, or if they're God. very deliberative. Yeah. And if you and send if they have responsibility, they'll never leave until they finish it. Right? Yeah. And if you send somebody an email that's high analytical and you leave out any numbers or justification <laughs> or anything, they're going to come back to you and say, what do you want me to do with this? How am I supposed to make it? I can't make a decision. So it you just, know, it makes everything go so much smoother. Absolutely. And you know, something else, and again, really learning um, about others, but then learning about me and Grace again has been very helpful with this with me and just the limited time that I've been involved with a, with a group in, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota here that uh, studies strengths <laughs> and again going in there and realizing that sometimes I can be a little over the top and uh, sometimes it's uh, okay, Joe. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> people aren't comfortable around that. So sometimes I just got to, you know, don't uh, just, just sit there quietly and just listen and it's okay. You know, and just because there's a moment of silence, you don't have to jump in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that's been very helpful. With, yeah. That's uh, the, that's the activator coming out, Joe. Yeah, we both yeah, have yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, uh, I hope to be, uh, to doing this for another 14, 15 years. And I realized that the majority of people I'm going to be working with are going to be much younger than me. Okay. And, uh, this is just my opinion now. But uh, because of technology and that, uh, I grew up in an era where most communication was face to face, and that's just what we did. And, and I'm involved in a sales uh, career, so you know that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Well, today there's so much that's done via technology. So sometimes when uh, some of my time yesterday was spent at one of our universities interacting with uh, some college students, you know, sometimes when they get somebody like me, it's just a little bit over the top. And so I have to remember just to kind of. Just tone that down a little bit when you're in front of them. Don't don't scare the bejeebers out of these kids. Yeah, yeah, and it is hard. I think we talked with Derek on our last episode, with Derek Jack, about me being kind of full throttle yeah. all the time, and it's my woo ideation and communication. That trifecta right there is like crack for you know communicators <laughs> that want to just go and go and go and go and go. And really, I don't have. I've never tapped on E in my life as far as running out of fuel when it comes to talking to people. Um, so it's, it is something, but that's, you know, Gallup refers to that as sharpening and kind of tempering the edge of your talent and know when to apply it and know when to kind of just pull back a little bit and let others take the wheel. And it's, that's important. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd agree very much. Absolutely. So Joe, I always ask this question, what is your favorite theme in your top five and why? You know, that's, <laughs> I've heard you ask that of other people and, and, and gosh, um, you know, when I, when I think of activator, one of the phrases that comes out there is it says that those types of people are often impatient. Well, that's, that's definitely me. I, I do admit that, uh, you know, the positivity thing, um, looking at that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at what's the best in, in life. And, and, uh, and I, I think that's huge having a positive attitude, uh, the maximizer trying to make things better all the time. Um, and I, I do feel real strong about the beliefs that I have. Um, and, and, and again, I apologize. I can't come up with one that I just, um, <laughs> You know, uh, I guess uh, if I had to pick, I probably would say it is the positivity, you know, because uh, I, I know that's something that people always talk about me and that attracts people to people when they say, gosh, you're always positive, you're always upbeat, you're always high energy, that that attracts people to you. So if I had to choose one, that would be it. But now you're asking me, that's like saying, which of my twins is my favorite? <laughs> well, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and don't ask which do I love more, my cat or my dog, because they both be angry oh. with me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yes. my I have two children. My daughter is five and my son is 
three. And oh. one day my water, my water, my daughter, excuse me, <laughs> said, daddy, do you love me more or Drew? Oh. And they were fighting oh. at the time. And I was like, I love you both the same. She was like, but come on, who do you love? He's in trouble. I'm not. Oh. So at this present moment. She pooped a great yeah. time yeah. to ask that question. Who's the one that did not color with pen on the side of the couch? Which one did not do that? <laughs> oh, him? I'll ask this question again, but she no. Was, she was pretty strategic about when she asked you, Andy. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I know, I know. And that's another thing in our family. I mean, strength really has become not only a part of my wife and I's communication and our language that we use, but we often look at my children. And I, Grace, I, I keep edging her on to start a podcast where she basically interviews her children and talks about strengths because from what I understand, what she's told me, your kids know their top five pretty well, oh, correct? They're they're ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> they they are all three completely different. And uh, yeah, the fun thing is, once you have a mindset of number one, everyone has value. Everyone has strengths. That that decision and I guess that moment for me is was more important than even finding out my own. So I've gone through life ever since that point. It was about a year ago when I discovered this truth about the world. Mm -hmm. My gosh, every single person has a perspective. I would love to learn about that perspective, whatever it is. It's actually helped me not to be so angry. Joe, do you remember what the one uh, strengths group where we talked about difficult people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> Wasn't do. that so much fun? Well, so no, I basically... no, it, no, it wasn't because it was me. They they, <laughs> put up, they, they, they kind of listed and they said, you know, oh, wait well, a minute. Oh, come on, come on. And it always went back to, well, you know, and, and, and what and what's strength? Well, that'd be a maximizer. So I no, just kind of sat there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then it was, well, what would that, will that be somebody that has positive? I just kind of sat there really nice, didn't say anything. And then I finally I said, look, it. look, I'm obviously your problem person. I'll just leave. <laughs> you know? oh, that's funny. Oh, I don't remember that being no, quite no. that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but what we did was we, uh, we as a group, there were about, I think, seven of us, maybe eight of us. Um, I just started listing down anybody who wanted to contribute. What's the type of person that really frustrates you mm -hmm. in life? What kind of quality is that? So impatience. Well, mm -hmm. then we matched that to a strength of someone who has the, a strength. Yeah. And that's what comes out in kind of the basement theme, you know, balcony and basement being the two ways that you could use each strength. So like someone who's impatient and pushy might be an activator. Or they might have command or, you know, so we, we picked different qualities for each one. It was incredible. I think we went through just about almost all the 34, though, Joe. It wasn't just your we top did. five. We did. <laughs> yeah. But I just remember thinking, so that's how I look at my kids, too. There's certain things that they, how they act and the way that they see the world has become a way for us to kind of discuss situations. And, you know, even in disciplining, it helps me to find out how to help them. So yeah. I just love seeing it in everybody, kids, adults. Young, old, doesn't matter. Well, that's why I asked you to be a co-host, Grace. All right. Yay. Love it. All right, Joe, Mr. Joe Stopka, thank you for being a guest on the Thematics. You're welcome back anytime, sir. I appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Thank you. It was fun being with the two of you today. Likewise. Thanks. Grace, you have any closing comments for our audience of our millions of listeners out there? Millions of listeners. Um, if you haven't already taken the test, take it. Um, yeah. And if you haven't unlocked the full 34... Um, give it to yourself as a birthday present. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I and I believe it's, uh, you know, Gallup's a business, so they have to make money. A lot of times when I talk to individuals and they say, well, I paid nine ninety nine for an assessment. I got my top five and now somebody wants me to pay more for my full 34. Yes, that's how it works. They're in business. They make a profit. Mm -hmm. Um, but now what they've done is you can unlock the remainder of your, your 34 for only seventy nine ninety nine if you've already taken the oh, assessment. So it's kind of nice. Surprised. I mean, if you, if you're not really getting a huge bang for your buck if you buy within a day of each other. But if you're somebody like Joe or myself who took the assessment and, you know, a year or so later you go back and you want to unlock your full 34, it's $79.99. And GallupStrengthCenter.com is where you can find all that good information at. To me, well worth the money. And I'll tell you what, I unlocked that stuff when I was a broke broke. <laughs> so me too. It, so it was like <laughs> peanut butter, jelly, eggs, and a full 34 report. Uh, it probably not necessarily, yeah, yeah. not necessarily in that order. But uh, well worth it. Keep listening to this broadcast. This is episode number 22 of Thematics. Again, if you guys want to be on the show, if you are a thematic, you don't need to be a coach. You don't need to be a strengths advocate out there telling the world about it. You just need to be willing to share your story about your experience with StrengthsFinder and unlocking your top five. Go ahead and shoot me an email, Andy, at UnleashedStrengths.com. Give me a ring, 815-441-2219. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. That's right, the big time, wherever all the cool kids are hanging out. iTunes.com. Go ahead and find us on the 
Apple Store there. Is that what it's called? What is yeah. iTunes? No, it's iTunes. iTunes Store? Yeah, iTunes Store, whatever. We're on there. Go ahead and search Thematics, and uh, you'll find us. Also, submit your questions. Use that piece of technology on our website, UnleashedStrengths.com. Far right-hand side, click on Leave Us a Voice Message. Go ahead and just record your question for Grace, myself, and our guest, and I will play your voice live on the air during this broadcast. That's the easiest way to get involved in this show. All right, everybody, this is Andy from UnleashedStrengths.com. Thank you for listening to to another episode of Thematics, and we'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of Thematics presented by UnleashedStrengths.com. Remember to embrace your strengths and always stay addicted.